U.S. citizens are automatically guaranteed a set of five basic freedoms according to the First Amendment. These are freedom of speech, religion, press, assembly, and petition. So why is it that public schools are limiting students' rights? Good afternoon, I'm Grace Keller, and over the past few weeks, I have been studying and researching the limitation of students' First Amendment rights in public schools. First, we must understand what exactly the First Amendment is. The First Amendment guarantees that Congress cannot make any laws abridging our five basic freedoms. Use of time, place, and manner restrictions Restraints placed on students' rights illustrate the First Amendment used in public schools. Schools restrain student speech with time, place, and manner restrictions only if they are equitable and rational to preventing the student from using their speech to cause harm to another student. Quoted from time, place, and manner, obscene speech includes the most hardcore pornography, while fighting words include offensive speech that would incite a reasonable, a reasonable person to violence. So, if a student can yell hateful things to another student without consequences, this could easily escalate into violence. Restrictions on students' First Amendment rights are not to prevent the student from absolute freedom, but to create a set of rules and to create order. Some may argue that U.S. public schools completely deprive students of their First Amendment rights but technically these schools do still follow the Constitution. Once again quoted from Time, Place, and Manner, nevertheless, the free speech clause of the First Amendment is not absolute. It has never been interpreted to guarantee all forms of speech without any restraint whatsoever. Instead, the US Supreme Court has repeatedly ruled that state and federal governments may place reasonable restrictions on the time, place, and manner of individual expression. An example of this could be the Tinker versus Des Moines case. In 1965, students wore black armbands to protest and to publicly show that they want to publicly show their support for truce in the Vietnam War. After the school repeatedly asking the students to remove the armband, they continued to refuse, and eventually they were suspended. The students' parents sued the school district for violating their First Amendment rights. And eventually the, court, the case ended up in the hands of the Supreme Court, <coughs> who decided that the armbands represented pure speech and would, is separate from the actions of those participating in it. So students do still have First Amendment rights in school, but they must steer away from anything which can be disruptive to the learning environment. Without restriction of speech for students, <coughs> this could lead to an uprise in hate speech which can easily lead a student to harm themselves or others. For example, suicide is the second leading cause of death among youth in the US. In just 2016, 6,159 people from the ages of 10 to 24 years old committed suicide. Bullying is a major factor of this. Bullied kids are more likely to have depression, anxiety, and a decreased academic achievement, which can interfere with their school. In worst cases, some may even retaliate through violent behaviors. According to StopBullying.gov, in 12 out of 15 shooting cases in the 1990s, the shooter had been bullied. The goal of schools is to provide an education for, all, for students of all backgrounds. By putting limits on the First Amendment, you ensure their safety and that this goal will be met. Thank you. What questions do you have? I think you have two questions for you. First up, what information did you need before you began your research, and how did that information shape your research? Well, I had to first obviously understand what the First Amendment really was, because of course everyone has kind of an understanding. But I needed to know specifically what the First Amendment was so I could know how to further research it and figure out my stance on whether I supported the limitation of that in schools or not. Okay, and what additional questions emerged from your research as you were going through this? Well, I kind of questioned how exactly the limitations affected students. Like, 
I question more so how it could further affect them, and that's kind of why I brought up how um, hate speech can lead to students having suicide, and with all the school shootings going on lately, I kind of had questions about if that could lead to it, and yeah. All right, thank you.